Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Press that like button right now. Press it, press it, press it because it really does get this uh, quality um, forex trading content out to uh, the traders that really need it. And uh, again, just a quick reminder as to uh, what we do at Trading 180 is really apply fundamental analysis to establish our directional bias and then apply technical analysis, our supply and demand strategies uh, to time trade entries, risk management and establish profit targets. So fundamentals first and then the technicals. So let's uh, get into, I guess, the um, the upcoming news events for this week. And we've got quite a lot going on. So week ahead, or some important news anyway. The week ahead, the US CPI report is likely to show uh, the inflation rate will hit a new four decade high crazy. So money's being devalued. The money in your pocket is being devalued at the moment. Well, if you're in the US, I guess it's all over uh, the world high inflation. Uh, but also the uh, the UK will release the fourth quarter GDP growth numbers. That's going to be important, that fourth quarter GDP growth number. And central banks in India, Russia, Indonesia, Thailand, and Mexico. Okay, uh, we don't really trade those currencies. We're not watching those anyway. Uh, meanwhile, market volatility is set to continue amid increasing bets of a more hawkish Fed stance with Chinese traders returning from their long week holidays. So um, market volatility, right? More hawkish Fed, especially if uh, inflation comes out to a new uh, uh, decade high, right? Four decades, 40 years. Um, crazy. So anyways... Let's get into, um, you know, so uh, the, I guess the technicals and um, and we'll focus on, I guess, the uh, the dollar first, the dollar index, which is just a measure of dollar strength against uh, other currencies like the euro, the yen, and the pound. And um, we use this as confluence. Just keep an eye on this. And uh, what's happened last week is if we had a bit of a pullback, I guess, made a new high um, from from this low here. So uh, prices have come back into that zone. Didn't really react uh, to it as much, but um, again, if you do see, you know, prices do start to react within this area, start to push higher. For example, that gives a decent um, indication as to maybe you want to be a buyer of the uh, the US uh, dollar. But I'm a buyer of the US dollar for, for fundamental reasons, regardless of what the technicals say uh, in the short term. And really, it's mainly because um, <clears throat> when we look at central banks. And I guess uh, ING, uh, Dutch Bank, um, uh, you know, looking at basically the, the central bank forecast as to what they're looking to do with monetary policy, i.e. interest rates and uh, quantitative easing. Uh, it's a general rule of thumb. You really want to be buying the uh, the central bank that is looking to high rates and um, against the central banks that are looking to um, not hike, rate, hike rates, right? Um, because hiking rates generally should have the effect of uh, appreciating a currency. But there's lots of central banks that are looking to uh, high rates uh, so which one is you know the ones that you should be buying and again this is not financial advice but the ones that you that I typically look towards to buy are the ones that are hiking more aggressively than others right so for example with the euro dollar and we'll get into the euro in in, 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 in a sec but um, you can see with the euro dollar you've got the Federal Reserve hiking uh, once twice three times projected five hikes this year right projected five hikes in the uh, uh, within these uh, fourth quarters four quarters so uh, compared to the European Central Bank's one so um, there are rumors around the central bank uh, the European Central Bank looking to high rates at some point uh, potentially coming into the fourth quarter although ING think it's going to come in the first quarter but uh, ultimately, uh, the Fed are looking to hike a lot more. So the path of these resistance should still be really to the downside. Not to say it's going to continue trending down. Um, we could obviously probably enter into more of a bit of a ranging market. Um, and then you've got, for example, the Bank of England, Bank of Canada, um, who are looking to, again, probably a bit more aggressively hike rates. Bank of Canada more so than the Bank of England, it looks like. There are more hikes coming this year than the Bank of England, it looks like. Anyways... Against, for example, the Bank of Japan, who are not looking to hike rates at all, and neither are the Swiss National Bank until the fourth quarter of 2023, which is the expectation. So uh, for me, the path is really kind of set out in regards to what it is that I want to do fundamentally. And then it's just a case of looking towards um, 
you know, uh, the charts, right, to see which uh, where the where the bargains are on a chart, on a price chart. And um, what we had is some U.S. Uh, dollar news, so shock jobs, U.S. shock January jobs report confounds the doubters. So the Omicron wave has depressed economic activity. Um, and this was meant to translate into weak hiring. It hasn't. Four hundred and seventy, sorry, sixty-seven thousand jobs uh, created a massive upward revision. Suggest a fundamentally very strong economy, uh, with with companies desperate to hire. And the biggest issue being the lack of suitable staff. Wages are rising sharply, and the Fed will respond some more wage problems or as far as inflation problems but the fact that the economy is doing um jobs are, are, are uh, i guess um an early indication of how um the economy is doing um the u.s is doing good so we should i say we but the federal reserve should um uh, they're going to think that the economy can support rate hikes so it just the, the the data is confirming the narrative of rate hikes right so for me the dollar is a buy so it's just a case of looking at where you want to be a buyer um not necessarily on a dollar index but um if prices do start to come down in the short term this looks like it's going to be a really nice buy for the dollar anyone who missed out on this buy opportunity when prices went higher are definitely going to be looking at that area that 94 95 to 94 60 area as an area to look for any kind of buy opportunity if prices do come down to this 94 round number 93 that's going to be an even better bargain right so um let's see what happens with the uh with the dollar uh, moving on to the dollar index, I'm oh, sorry, the uh, dollar yen, sorry. Um, and so for me, again, buying the dollar because they're they're looking to high crates and the uh, the yen are not looking to high crates anytime soon. Um, really, I think for me, uh, there is, uh, you know, the path of this resistance again is to the upside. Um, so there is a demand zone here, but I kind of hesitate to put it there. Um, the reason why it's not necessarily the strongest area of demand, uh, for so for several reasons, but if prices do come back down to that area, you can look for a a, a buy trade. But I would prefer this one fourteen to one thirteen fifties area for a nice uh, potential buy. But um, intraday, I guess that's that's decent. But the uh, first demand zone, but I probably would more look look, look for anything around that one thirteen area. Even better would be the one twelve fifty. Whether it will get down there or not is anyone's guess um, i'm not here to predict what price is going to do in the short term but i know in the uh, long term prices are likely to continue going higher in the medium to long term so um, any pullbacks are really kind of buy opportunities for me unless of course we do get you know lots of risk off sentiment and uh, money tends to flow into the japanese yen in a risk off environment so if um you know the, uh, the russia and, and ukraine tensions really does ramp up if there's a you know a war that breaks out for example you may see um the yen start to strengthen against pretty much all currencies so just be aware of that moving on to the dollar swiss and same thing with dollar swiss looking to be a buyer at some point i think the best area for me would be anywhere around this um uh, 0 0.90 area um i think is, is a really nice buy of course you can start to look to buy in here but um for me the levels have been touched several times right although this has led to a new high so this is definitely something that you have to consider um Worth taking a taking a trade here, but ultimately I think the best prices are going to be down by the uh, 0 0.908 level. And again, our direction is already established, right? I'm looking for um, uh, higher uh, dollar prices uh, or the, for the dollar to appreciate definitely again to Swiss franc in the medium to long term. In the short term, nobody knows, right? Nobody can predict. So let's see what happens there. If you do want to get short on the... Uh, on the dollar, there is, uh, I guess, a short trade. I have some supply there as well. So look for supply in and around that first zone there. So there's definitely been a sell-off on the dollar and buying of the Swiss francs. So if prices do come up into that 93.10 area, there is a short trade right there. Um, moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD. Um, again, two. there are two... Um, uh, central banks that are looking to 
high crates, right? They're looking to high crates. So for me, I don't really like trading um, in an environment where you've got two central banks that are pretty much neck and neck when it comes to hiking rates. So for me, um, again, not necessarily the best currency pair to trade. If you were looking for a, a pair to trade, I mean, uh, I guess a directions trade, and it could be either, right? That would be the, the, the sell trade. And I think ultimately, I think this might be uh, the best uh, buy trade or just above there would be a decent uh, short trade as well for considering this being an absolute high and it's being an absolute low right so prices are contained between the high and the low which is a range a, va a value range and a value auction i guess and um so it's really you're looking to try to trade at highs and lows of potential ranges so the best area is to look for buy trades I guess you could, you could look for here but this would probably be the better area to look for any kind of buy trades if you want to be a buyer of the US dollar or buyer of the Canadian dollar you're looking at probably somewhere now or even just a bit higher but not a pair that I'm really looking at uh, dollar uh, pound dollar I should say pound dollar so um, the pound dollar the pound again are looking to high crates and a hawkish Bank of England raises rates and there's surely more to come so the fact that four out of nine Bank of England rate setters voted for a 50 basis points uh, rate hike, uh, rate rise at the, at the February meeting shows that policymakers are keen to act preemptively amid high deadline headline sorry inflation rates. Now we expect further rates, uh, rate rates in March and May. So with that being said, again you've got two central banks aggressively looking to hike. The, the Bank of England are actually ahead of the uh, the US dollar. Um, but for me, it's it's pretty much neck and neck which one you really want to be buying or selling, right? So prices didn't react uh, to this area here simply because it you know, it's what obviously wasn't a bargain, right? Um, but we do have established a nice demand zone there, which I do like. So it's demand. So if you want to be a buyer at a pound, I do think that this area here is nice for it, technically anyways, um, for a sell traders in buying the uh, US dollar, um, you're pretty much looking at this area here, first touches of levels, or maybe zooming out a bit. Yeah, possibly maybe up, not necessarily the best area, but decent area. We've got, we're in a bit of a range, like I said, from here to here. So prices are contained. We've got a, sh a smaller range between that area there if prices do range. So um, that, that 137.90 up to 137.5, uh, uh, so let's just say 09. 1375 would be where the area to look for any kind of long or short trades but not really a pair that I'm looking to get involved in because uh, there's really no trade divergences with the pound or the dollar uh, moving on to the euro dollar now euro dollar massive move up this week you know um, the the central bank European central bank were actually meant to um, say meant to but they were expected to uh, be a bit dovish um, but they literally turned around and were hawkish on this, right? They were very hawkish, and uh, it's something that I did mention in the uh, in my uh, private members group. So on the second uh, of February, Wednesday, the second of February, I said, um, so I was saying to the group that unless the ECB turn hawkish, I think the euro has pulled back to a decent shorting or to decent shorting levels on certain pairs. So going back again to uh, to the euro on the second, it had pulled back to a nice uh, supply zone, right? So it pulled back to that pair. So I was thinking it's a, it's a decent level, right? But unless they turn hawkish, so we were expecting, well, I say I was expecting, but I was uh, thinking that they could turn hawkish, right? There was a possibility, and this is the reason why. I said, keep in mind that the ECB's turn will be based on future expectations of economic growth and rising inflation. The more inflation rises, the more pressure it puts on the ECB to have to appreciate their currency because rising inflation is essentially currency devaluation. I am personally waiting until after the press conference uh, to announce um, announcements to see how the market is interpreting the ECB's tone. The, AC, the ECB may have to talk up, become slightly hawkish if they see inflation as a longer term problem rather than temporary. Remember that the Fed thought that the US, that, um, the US inflation was transitory and, um, and they were wrong, right? So the same thing could happen with Europe. The problem that Europe has though is that GDP may not support hikes at the moment. So I didn't think that they were gonna, I knew they were gonna probably try and turn hawkish at some point, but I didn't know it was gonna be there, but I was basically just waiting to see what was gonna happen. Also as well, another thing, 
uh, to talk about in terms of currency strength. The ECB do not want a stronger euro, right? They don't want a stronger euro. The euro, if the euro continues to depreciate, it causes inflation data to go higher and will only compound their inflation problem. So I'm starting to feel that the ECB will have no choice but to start to be hawkish at some point this year. Now may be too soon for a hawkish tone, but come second quarter, third quarter, I do think the euro will be a buy. Keep an eye on jobs data as it will, um, um, as well as the usual GDP for signs of economic recovery because it's at that point that uh, the, the rumours will start regarding the euro appreciation central bank currency. Well, it looks like, well, it looked like the uh, the, um, the central bank got there before me, right? And got there, got there before a lot of uh, banks because a lot of banks were, weren't were expecting a hawkish euro just yet, right? So that's the reason why you had this, you know, you have this price action happen right now. So with that being said, buying or selling the euro dollar well for me i'm still a seller of the euro against the dollar that is but i'm a buyer against the euro against other currencies like for example the yen or the swiss franc um but is this the area to look for a short trade of course nobody knows whether it will turn around this is the reason why we manage our risk um and um just basically say all right then take a chance right we've got to speculate because no one's going to know it was a bargain at this point in time as far as the the, the dollar was a bargain here back in january but that was when um you know the ecb were very dovish and the and the dollar and the fed were, were quite hawkish on interest rates now things have kind of turned around a bit the market has to revalue what the value of the uh, uh the euro is right so is this the area it's worth a shot right if you lose the trade or i'm not telling you to to take this trade but if you know you do enter this and you lose the trade ah oh, well so what at some point you know it this could be the level right so with that being said, of course, this isn't the full strategy I'm giving you. This is the very, very basics. Of course, the guys in my group will know exactly what to do um, technically and what to look for technically. But as you're, you know, watching this free on YouTube, I can't go over obviously, you know, the full strategy. So, from the perspective of um, just looking at, um, you know, where where the bargains are and where you want to look for potential trades, you know, these are the areas that you want to look for. You know, the trade. Well, I'm looking for the trade anyway. Um, and again, nobody knows, right? If you don't want to take that trade, then don't take it. There's other ways in order for, to wait for confirmation. Again, the guys in the group know exactly what to do. Um, so if you don't want to take this trade and you're watching this and you're in the group, um, you know, just go through the course and you'll see that there are um, ways to, uh, to, to, to enter, I guess, more of a conservative entry, I guess. Um, but I do think that at some point, um, we will enter into some sort of ranging market. Will prices range from here, for example? Nobody knows, right? Or will prices range from you know that low to this high, right? And it could that could be the range. Either way, the, the I think the dollar are definitely still more uh, are hiking more than the uh, uh, than the euro. Of course, the euro would were were, were, not, were basically dovish, and now they're starting to kind of be a bit more hawkish. Um, which is basically the revaluation. I don't think prices will come down to this one one eleven, you know, anymore. I think the downside is definitely capped, and now they're just trying to find, I guess, a bit of a prices are trying to find a, a value range, an auction, um, fair value auction um, between a high and a low that you know is going to be agreed. Whether it would be here or here, nobody knows. But if that is not the case, and you know prices go higher then it's just look for trades up here and obviously you've got a lot more downside potential uh, the cheaper you buy the uh, the dollar right that's just my thinking anyway so with that being said i'm not really looking to buy the dollar against the uh sorry euro against the dollar um that's not really where my uh, my my bias is um so let's see what happens and remember as well uh, the euro is it's just the rumor right the rumor it's not that to say that they are they are going to do it also as well the data has to support the narrative because if the data doesn't support the fact that they can high crates so it should high crates then the euro is going to be revalued again and that room is going to not have any really kind of merit to it so let's see what happens but if you are looking to um you know buy the euro i guess the nearest uh, demand zone is going to be all the way down at the uh 112 40s right so if you get a you know 
prices come down here, that's going to be where you should look for a potential buy. Um, or if prices make higher highs, higher lows, then you're waiting for a pullback into that higher low um, to get long on that euro. Moving on to the Australian dollar, US dollar. And um, yeah, we had, a, I guess last week, we did have, let me just get rid of this. We did have um, a reaction to that demand zone, which now starts to come down to here. Um, and we did react again off of this supply zone. I think for me, uh, the dollar, US dollar anyway, is still a, a bit of a sell as they're looking to hike um, rates. So, you know, that was the first area, fresh area of supply and prices, you know, did uh, start to fall to the downside. Now, if prices do start to come up um, beyond that, uh, then, um, you know, this, is, this isn't really a pair that I'm interested in. Um, although the Australian dollar is, you know, the weaker out of the two, um, I think there is scope for the Australian dollar to start to appreciate the RBA did end um, uh, their uh, their QE program or they're ending it anyway. I think February the 10th is the, dead, is the day that they're going to end it and potentially looking to start to high create. So pretty much what's, what happened with the euro where they're trying to revalue the euro now against the dollar. I think the Australian dollar now may start to be revalued. So you could have a situation where if prices pull back into this zone here. In fact, that could be a very nice buy, a very nice buy. Um, but it's not again, it's not a pair that I'm interested in. Um, fundamentally because I do want to look for divergences I don't think the convergence trade at the moment um, for me is strong enough for me to want to get involved in that um, and also as well gold so looking at gold strong what was it, a strong um, dollar or stronger dollar uh, puts a lid on um, on gold but I do think again gold with if, if inflation starts to again run rampant then you should see gold go to the upside um, if uh, any kind of bad data for, for the US, for example, with jobs or economic slowdown, gold pretty much goes higher. But at the moment, gold is, I mean, the dollar is recovering GDP wise. So it's probably suppressing uh, gold for now. And let's see what really happens. But again, if you're in a bit of a tight spot with gold. I would say, again, the uh, the trades to really kind of look for is probably a deeper pullback into this demand zone around a 16, 1760 area or up at the real kind of highs around that 1860, 1870 area for any kind of shorts. I think this area is decent as well. The 1850s for a short as well is, is, is okay. I do like that technically, um, but let's see what happens. But other than that, um, if you're looking to buy the dollar, then you know you, you to buy gold at the same time as buying the dollar is um, a bit counterintuitive. So I'd say pick a side and uh, see which one uh, you know prevails, right? For me, a stronger dollar prevails I'm not saying a weaker dollar prevails uh, would, would then ensue, but it's gold is a much harder trade. Anyways, um, that's it for this week. I hope you have a great trading week and uh, take care. Speak to you all soon.